So many full stack developers neglect their user interfaces and they'll say things like, I don't have the time for a fancy UI. It's not really my area of expertise. Users don't really care about the UI anyway, as long as it works. These are all just excuses because UI development is perceived as being very subjective and particularly difficult. So in this video, I'm gonna give you five no effort rules that you just need to be aware of that'll have you producing awesome, clean, attractive user interfaces that won't be hindering the functionality of your application, but rather enhancing it. So number one is to embrace the space. We really want our users to feel comfortable and at ease. At no point do we even want our users to be aware of the user interface. It should just be a natural thing that they don't even think of. So if we give our elements too little space around them, you're gonna present a cramped and uncomfortable feeling. If you add too much space, your UI is gonna feel empty. So for example, we want a label and its related text input field to be far enough apart from each other so that it feels like they've got breathing room, but we don't want them so far apart that they don't feel like they're related to each other. Conversely, when we want to separate content, we need to make sure that the gaps between our headings and our content illustrates the fact that they are separate pieces of content. It's important to know the difference between the margin of an element, which is the area or spacing outside of the element, and the padding of an element, which relates to the spacing inside of the borders of that element. So how much space is just right? The more space is generally better than no space. If you're not sure, the easiest approach is to make it really extreme, which is very noticeably too much, in that in one direction or the other, and then slowly reduce it and bring it back till it feels comfortable. The moment it feels uncomfortable in that direction, push it back in the, in the other direction. Number two is readability. Readability is absolutely critical to a decent UI. Users are gonna be massively frustrated if they can't interpret what you're trying to tell them on the screen. First of all, when it comes to text, make sure you're using a clear, easy to read font. Arial, Helvetica, my personal favorite, Roboto. You wanna avoid overly decorative fonts for your primary content. Then color contrast, which is critical to both your text and any icons you are using on your UI. And what this really means is that this makes sure the thing you want your users to see stands out from the background it's on. The rules here are really simple. If you have a dark background, just use a light foreground. And if you have a light background, use a dark foreground. Otherwise, your text and your icons are just gonna blur into the background. No one's gonna be able to read it. This is especially true for any users that have visual impairments. You really wanna be thinking about them. There's plenty of tools out there to double check how well your text stands out from the background. I normally pick the color of, uh, that I want for a background, and then I will just go as light as possible in that same color scope. Number three is consistency. This has loads of benefits on multiple levels. First of all, from a time and development point of view, using the same styles and assets and controls over and over will save you loads of time. You're developing it once and reusing it. You're not repeating yourself. This is what we want. If you develop a style guide and share that with your team, you're taking away the need for your team members to make a decision whenever they need to think how is something going to look or what control am I going to use here if they can just reference the style guide and we can say always in this situation you use this type of control. Familiarity and predictability will teach your users about how to use your application. Once a user has used one form on your application and you stick with all the same controls on the subsequent forms your user already knows what to expect. Make sure you have consistency with your controls. Let's say you have a confirmation dialogue. Ensure that your confirmation button always stays on the right-hand side and your cancel button always stays on the left-hand side. If you are continuously swapping those two around, you're gonna be confusing your users. Likewise, if you give your users a selection of options to select from, don't in one form use radio buttons and then the next form use drop down lists, keep it consistent so that your users know what to expect. This goes ahead with the, the spacing. Keeping consistent spacing between your headings will give, will teach your users what the different headings mean, which, one are, which ones are more important than others. What are the hierarchy of those headings? Consistent icons is a great thing as well. If you use icons that are, are the standard throughout the world or in other applications similar to yours, that that's another thing you don't have to teach your user because they're already gonna be familiar. I also suggest using icons all from the same library. If you're not in the position where you've got a member of your team 
who's actually developing new icons for your product. Pick an icon library and stick with it. Take icons directly out of that library, even if there isn't something that fits exactly for the icon you need. Having icons from two different library is gonna, it's gonna break the look and feel of your application. Number four is colors. And this is the one that most developers feel uncomfortable doing UIs, have a problem with because they think it's very subjective, but it's not as subjective as you think. Each color already has a perception attached to it. Without you even realizing it, you will associate a particular color with some sort of emotion or feeling. Without us realizing it, society has already given us meaning for particular colors. If you think about the color green, you automatically think of health, or safety or positivity. Amber usually means warning or caution. Whenever you think of red, you probably think danger or passion or excitement. Blue is usually associated with trust and security. Subconsciously, these colors mean something for us. So as a full stack developer, you should be picking colors based on how those colors are going to be used. Does it match the functionality of the thing you're associating them with? Use red and amber to tell that your users are in a potentially dangerous place, use green for positivity to tell, you, tell your users they're doing the right thing. Number five is experimentation. Some of the best design elements often come from just making a mistake and it ends up just looking awesome. You should randomly try and do something that you don't expect to work. In the worst case, you're just reaffirming your original idea was better. It ends up looking or being a better user experience for your user. You should really be doing mockups and wireframes before you write a single line of code. This will help you chop and change things really quickly to try out different things to see what works and what doesn't. And finding out what doesn't work is just as important as finding out what does work. And for the bonus rule is to look at your UI with fresh eyes. So this could be your fresh eyes where you, after you've done your user interface, go away for a night, sleep on it and come back and take a fresh look in the morning and see if you still feel the same way that you did while you were developing it. All those fresh pair of eyes could be uh, somebody else. Best case scenario, you're asking your user to have a look and give some feedback on how they feel. But if you don't have immediate access to your user, speak to one of your teammates, speak to your spouse, see what they think. If you show your application to your grandmother and she has no problem navigating your user interface, then you're winning. So listening to feedback is really good. And worst case scenario, you can ignore the feedback as well, but just get some feedback. Being a full stack developer, you've still got back end code to worry about. So you wanna watch this video next where I give you five super easy tips on how to be a better software developer.